Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be going over five heroes or the five best heroes for every single role. We'll be starting with the safe lane and going all the way to position five. I feel like I haven't made one of these videos since the patch and <laughs> the patch is what? Three weeks to a month old now? That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The original patch was, was almost a month ago now. That's that's insane. But the meta has evolved. I'm sure a lot of us have had time to feel out what's strong understand what's you know good in the current meta but maybe if you don't play the game as much or if you don't follow the pro scene or you're just not sure what you should be playing at the moment to win your pubs and just be playing the strongest hero hopefully this video will help you out with that and let's get into it but before we do, I just also want to mention on the Game League website, I'm making a lot of great content, guys. Uh, I know obviously you hear these ads every single video, and so a lot of you guys probably just skip them or write them off. But I would like to say that I just made two full courses over on the website. The most recent one I just finished up today and was very happy with was a Marcy course, a Marcy support course that can also be applied if you want to play Marcy core. And so if you're just looking to follow up on the meta, like you like these meta videos on YouTube and you want to learn how to play the heroes more in depth, because I can't talk about every little thing I think you should do on Marcy, every tip and trick I think you should do on Marcy in a video where I'm talking about 25 heroes. That's just not going to happen. So click the link down below, subscribe to the website. I really think you guys are going to like the content. If you like what you have here on YouTube, it's really good stuff and i'll see you there all right so getting to the safe lane i know bsj just made a video on this it's funny i saw this video i'm like oh <laughs> that's funny it wasn't really just a safe lane only video though so whatever i'm gonna focus either way i'm gonna focus mainly on the top five safe laners that i think are really powerful right now coming to number five and honestly this one could be higher on the list if i thought it was a better pub hero but that's faceless void i think void just all around is one of the best heroes in dota i think he's very good against a lot of the current meta i think he counters the lena's mid the sf mid i think he's good against yeah i, I was gonna say bat rider mid and bat rider off lane I think it's just a well-rounded hero that also enables these greedy mids. And honestly, my favorite way to play solo queue, and basically a, a big thing you'll see here throughout the safe laners is heroes that don't necessarily take farm away from the mid because mids are often mid dominators. There's a lot more mid dominators in the meta. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but Batrider, Lena, SF, we're actually going to talk about Meepo today. <laughs> uh, so a lot of these heroes want to be farming, taking space. And if their safe laner does that, things get a little bit weird sometimes, right? Not always, not always. You don't have to look at Dota like that. I, I think sometimes people give up when it's like that. But Faceless Void is honestly the best hero in the game at working with these ranged greedy mids, whether or not it's Lena, SF, or DP. What, you know, or, or a bunch of other heroes because Kronos is fantastic. He doesn't take a lot of space on the map. The hero just inherently is really good. It got buffed when it was already a really strong hero in the recent patch. So Void is just in a great spot and definitely a hero I'd recommend learning. Coming in at number four is Pudge. Situationally, Pudge is like the best hero in the game. If the enemy team can't shut it down early game and it gets to like a 14, 15 minute Axe timing, sometimes even earlier if you're really popping off and then they don't have good matchups. For instance, if their safe laner is a PL and their mid laner is an Ember Spirit and their off laner is a Death Prophet, even though DP is not terrible against Pudge, it, you know, while Flesh Heap is active, DP doesn't really do anything to you. So the point is, is that if you have these good game matchups, when you click Flesh Heap, you're untouchable, right? You're untouchable, period. You're untouchable, right? And so that's just the case. If you know the enemy team doesn't have good responses to your hero, it's a great last pick hero. You can second phase Pudge as well. It's not like, oh, they have Phantom Assassin. He can crit me. You know, my game is over. Even with Flesh Heap and a Plate Mail, this PA isn't doing that much. Early game, you run her over, right? If this PA goes like Deso Battle Fury and you have Vanguard, which you can go or you just have a plate mail, this PA is dying. She's dying to rot. And then through BKB, right, you dismember her. So Pudge, all in all, I just think really powerful hero right now. Can be also played as a mid and an off lane, but uh, yeah, just, just really a, a well-rounded hero. And I'm surprised to say that as Pudge has never really been that. Coming in at number three is my favorite safe laner of the list, or maybe second favorite, and that is Naga Siren. Naga Siren got a lot of just minor buffs all over the place. Attack speed, net cast range, um, her axe was significantly buffed because you can like pull people in who you net. That's really powerful. There's so much about this hero that's just like better now. Everything about the hero got buffed. Like the Q got buffed. The shard got buffed. I think the talents got buffed if I'm not mistaken. Everything got buffed. And yeah, I don't know. This hero is just good. I also think it's good with a lot of the popular fives. I like Naga Undying. I think this lane has a lot of kill potential comically naga net is just really good at level one 2.75 second duration there's so much kill potential like people don't see naga as a kill hero 
it's a kill hero in lane. If they can't kill the illusions, it's a kill hero in lane, period. Even if they can kill the illusions, if you have something like um, like a dying, like Jakiro or AA, right, you're gonna be able to get kills in the lane. And then in the mid game, if you have something like Jakiro Naga, it's just dirty, right? The song and the ice path is so powerful. And so, yeah, you just, you just destroy people. I also think Naga honestly just has pretty good matchups. I feel like the meta doesn't really clear illusions that well. I find there to be a lot of games where I'm like, Beastmaster looks good here, Lycan looks good here, Peel looks good here, Naga looks good here, TB looks good here. I, I just feel like a lot of comps don't really have great answers to illusions for one re reason or another. But I look at a lot of the heroes that are on this list and other roles and I'm like, yeah, they're not that good against illusions. A lot of them are actually straight up bad against illusions. And so I just really like Naga and I think if you spam Naga and learn this hero, it it's pretty broken. Coming to number two is Morphling. This hero could be number one, probably should be number one. It doesn't really have any losing lane matchup, not that I've seen. Uh, the W is broken, the E is in the best place it's ever been in, arguably. It's just good, the Ags is the best place it's ever been, you know, like, this hero, it's just... <laughs> like, I had a game where I actually did well against it in lane, but then it just got to the mid to late game, it had its Ags, it just turned into my Slark and was just killing my backline. I felt like there was nothing I could do about it, and the lane, I just can't shut it down. Like, old Morphling, I swear you could pressure it, right? You could run at him, you could pressure him, drop him low. Like, I, I was playing Omni Knight, Omni Knight off lane, and I was, like, dropping him low with Purification and my Hammer of Purity, but he, he just healed. Like, he just goes to min, uh, min strength and goes back up, and he's just, like, full health again. I, it just... It's so confusing how this Morphling hero works because its shift rate is 5 at level 1 now. It's just stupid. The W, you can literally put 2 points in it and then max W. It's just nuts. Or like, uh, put 2 points W, 2 points waveform. It's just a crazy hero right now. Coming to number 1 is Slark. Dude, I, I cannot stand Slark for a couple reasons. Number 1, they buffed his lane, his base attack speed's way better. But also, Flag Bearers really favor Slark in my opinion. Because this hero has regen issues. But with Flag Bearers, you're constantly or consistently getting 3 HP regen, which benefits Slark more than other heroes in my opinion, because if Slark is winning the lane and then gets to heal up and then pressure again, it's a big deal, right? Slark would slowly get shipped out of the lane, but if you're both full HP, often he'll win the trade. Does that make sense? So like heroes that win trades when they are full HP, I feel like are better now. I think honestly Morphling is a great example of this where he just can over and over again be high HP, especially considering the three HP bonus from Flag Bears really benefits heroes with high armor and low HP pools, which Slark isn't the highest of armor, but he's pretty high. And I talked about how Essence Shift is already good with that. And Morphling's a great example of as well. And it's just how the pounce works with Ags. You steal so much AG so fast and you can go Falcon Blade into Ags. Like literally I'm seeing Slarks go Falcon Blade into Ags and just steal stats with max pounce. And it's crazy. It's like, <laughs> they'll like hit barely anyone. And all of a sudden they just hit for 200 with like 300 attack speed or something insane. Absolutely insane. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Slark's my number one. Getting into the mid lane, coming to number five for mid is Meepo. I'll keep this one real short. Meepo is just kind of good right now. The Dragonlance, the Ags, it can dominate mid matchups. Like it crushes Void Spirit in lane if you know what you're doing. It out farms like everybody. It doesn't really care that there's no small camp because it farms the large camp. So it's one of the only mids that it can actually farm the lane and the large camp every minute. And it actually really benefits from that. Like it out farms people because of that. So yeah, it's pretty good. Coming to number four is Pango. In terms of like the high tempo, well scaling mobility heroes, I think Pango or Ember are, are the best. I didn't put Ember on this list, but I think Ember could be replaced at number four or three here. So he's an honorable mention, I suppose. But I just, I don't think really anything changed about Pango. I think the hero's just been good, is good, didn't get nerfed, and is a solid four. Uh, if your team has a greedy side laner or side lanes, which like, dude, every game I pick a greedy off laner, my mid still picks Tinker or Arc Warden. I just can't understand. I mean, you can get away with it. Like, I've won games where we have three greedy cores, but that shit's just crazy, especially in high MR. Either way, moving on. Coming in at number three is Primal. Very similar to Pango, but I think he has some pretty cool winning mid matchups. I think he can solo kill Shadow Fiend, which is kind of interesting. I think he can solo kill Lina, or at least do well against Lina uh, because of Uproar. So, yeah, I don't know, Primal Beast is just a cool mid hero. It's really, really high tempo as well. Considering at level 10, this hero kind of spikes with max Onslaught, max Trample. It kind of hits a, a spike. I would say it's like arguably the strongest hero in the game at level 10. 
it's really crazy how much damage it does with the ulti and with trample and onslaught so yeah primal beast is mid really good for keeping tempo does fall off a little bit so you got to make sure your your side laners are greedy i would say but if that's the case you can just create so much space and split the map really well as you one shot creep waves coming at number two is lena the mid lane wants to be dominated there's no small camp so that's good for lena she wins her lane which she often will there's like barely any lena counters if not none if she wins her lane, which, as I said, she often will, yeah, she can dominate, like, hard. And, uh, yeah, she can code two different builds. If it's a bad game for physical Lina, right, they have a bunch of high armor heroes, they have, like, a Terra Blade. You don't really want to go fist. I mean, you could go MKB build, like, D lands MKB against TB. It's not bad, honestly, I've seen it happen quite a bit. But let's say they have, like, Lycan and just a bunch of heroes that are going to easily catch you. You can go Aetherlands bots Ags, be this, like, slippery backline hero that flies over cliffs and explode these heroes. It, it's really cool how Lena is very flexible and is just such a good mid dominator. And coming to number one is Batrider. I think this one could be replaced with Lena at number two, but Batrider just also giga dominates the lane, has a lot of favorable matchups, scales quite well, rushes bots, meaning it can move around the map very effectively. And so it's just a strong hero in the meta right now. Let's get into off lane. Coming to number five is Enigma. Honestly, in pubs, this hero is pretty good. I think the hero isn't fully understood. So like, if you want to play it in well, watch a pro replay. I just made a video on it. So watch that before trying. But if you do get down Enigma, it dominates most lanes. If you get decent, it scales better than like any other offlaner, which is great in pubs. As long as you micro a little and push in lanes with Eidolons, you'll just dominate the mid to late game. And yeah, that's all there is to say about Enigma. It's very hard to lane into right now, especially with how the offlane is set up. It's pretty easy to get the lane back, and yeah, you just kill. Coming to number four is Legion. I love Legion right now. Big fan of Legion, especially with her dual damage talent at level 10. I don't know, I've just had a lot of success with this hero. Uh, I feel like Armlet's in a good place, Blade Mel's in a good place. She can buy both of them with Blink, and yeah, you have no BKB, but the amount of damage Legion does and how tanky she is with Blade Mel Armlet is nutty. You blink in, you duel someone with Blade Mail Armlet, you're basically guaranteed to kill them because you're going to be hitting for like 230 or something insane with bonus attack speed and e procs. So you're basically guaranteed to kill who you duel. And if the enemy tries to kill you and you have your Blade Mail active, they're going to take a lot of damage in return. So often you'll get a kill and die, but that's what you want as Legion in the current meta. And I think, and that's always kind of what you've wanted. And she's better than ever at doing that. Command number three is Visage. He does fine in lane in low MMR or average MMR and then scales extremely well, buys the broken aura items, which is like drums and Wraith Pact and then groups up. And then even if you don't win the early fights, it's fine. He scales extremely well. So yeah. Death Prophet, come in at number two. Death Prophet, you siphon them. You hit level seven, you click EXO or six, you click EXO. The enemy team tries to gank you and you get a triple kill. Coming in at number one is Undying. I don't know. I think people really haven't experimented enough with Undying Core. Some teams have. A lot of teams have. I know uh, Entity plays it. I play it. Uh, I, I know Muon Nouns plays it. So there's a lot of people who are playing it, but it's just so good, man. You just dominate like every lane. You scale extremely well with the shard. You can solo Roche with the shard. If you have, if you have shard, you solo Roche. Not kidding. I'm not kidding. If you haven't tried it, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you can solo Roche. Not that you need to, like usually you don't want to take the Aegis so you give it to someone else, but the amount of tempo you can keep on this hero, just don't go a stupid build. I typically like to go with Soul Ring, Mata Boots, Drums, BKB, Shard, or Shard, BKB. And yeah, you just take Roche, dominate the lane, max the K. I personally like to max Soul Rip. A lot of people like to go uh, Phase and max Tombstone, which I think is okay. I think that build is solid as well. Uh, I think it's worse at dominating the lane, but it depends on your matchups, depends on the matchups. Either way. Give this hero a shot. Now let's get into the position fours. Coming in at number five is Shaman. I don't think too much change about the hero, but it still helps you Roche. It's a good laner. Honestly, there's nothing too special about Shaman. I'm not gonna hype it up too much. It's just a high winnery hero. I think it's overall solid. And as I said, gives you Roche potential. Also, honestly, I feel like a lot of the safe laners don't hit buildings very well. Like even as I look at the safe laner list, Slark doesn't take buildings, Morphling does, Naga doesn't really take buildings, Pudge doesn't take buildings, neither does Void. So having a Shaman on your team kind of enables these already broken meta heroes to not have as big of a weakness when it comes to taking Roshan, uh, which Slark, Naga, Pudge, Void all are not that great at. They're not terrible, but they're not great at. And Shaman kind of fills in that gap. So a lot of this, the meta heroes really like having Serpent Wards on their team. 
Coming to number four is Primal. I really like Primal as a support, as I think the hero falls off as a core, but I think you have to rush BKB, so I don't love it as a five. I really like Phase Boots Winley's wand in the BKB as a support Primal and just playing around clarities for mana regen as well as raindrops uh, and going from there. Coming to number three is Murana. Honestly, I just think this hero is straight up good. The buffs it got in Leap and its Star Storm radius are huge, and I think it works really well with a lot of the current meta offlaners. I honestly think it's good with Enigma. That lane's interesting because like, it seems weird because it's like, oh, you, you don't have a stun for, or like a reliable stun for Eidolon damage, but you kind of just play to manipulate the wave, get the creeps back. Murana trades really well one-on-one -on -one, and she can bully out the safe laner if they try to kill Eidolons. And so it's just like, for instance, TA, right? If you have a Murana in the lane, the Murana can just click the TA and then the TA can't really kill Eidolons. It's it just really plays out like that a lot but either way moving on she buys vessel good item buys wraith pack buys drums can just kind of buy the aura items i even like Mataboot's mech marana i think that build's kind of cool as well as mechs in a good place so there's a lot of different builds you can go on marana i personally think the most reliable is vessel and yeah i don't know it was just really the buffs to this hero were so significant 2.5 to 4 second movement speed bonus on, on, on leap. Uh, the star storm radius basically always hits the second star storm now, which is really key. And then the ulti has always just been good, but I, I don't know. It's just such a strong hero, such a well-rounded hero. If you don't know what to pick, pick Murana. It's always basically always going to be good, even without a setup stun. Coming to number two is Shaker. I just like Shaker. I think with Enigma, he's really good. With Legion, he's good. Visage, he's good. DP is good. Undying, he's good. I think he lanes pretty well. Not broke. He's not a broken laner. He's not like some really strong laner, but I think he just enables a lot of the current offlaners who are really good at laning. Like a lot of the strong offlaners don't need a giga lane dominator. You can play to like mega crush the lane with like Tiny is better than Shaker in lane. Clock's better than Shaker in lane. Tusk is better than Shaker in lane. But at the end of the day, Shaker's kind of better than all of those heroes in the mid game and late game generally. And so, yeah, it's just really powerful. Lanes well with the current heroes. Fisher's good, Shard's good. Aether, Blink with Shard in the late game. Such crazy impact this hero can have. And finally is Marcy. BKB phase boots Marcy in the mid to late game is stupid. You can't change my mind. This hero is literally a core from the support role. It does, it solo kills cores with just a BKB. It makes no sense why Marcy does so much. Broken laner, broken in the mid to late game. I can't believe I'm saying this is when the patch originally came out, I thought the hero was trash, but instead of being played as an initiator with a blink and an aether, people realized I can just play around the fact that they heavily buffed the E and the ult, and even the W is better for right clicking, because when you pounce and they instantly get stunned, you don't have to toss them over your head, so you can save time and initiate and auto attack faster. So basically, this hero, when it comes to right clicking with the ult, is completely insane, and they buff the ult. It's way better and goes through BKB, which is crazy. Now let's talk about fives. Coming into number one, we have, or number five, we have AA. A lot of healing going on in the current meta, a lot of healing. Definitely a lot of healing. Good against Slark, good against Morph, good against Void, pretty good against Pudge. Ice Vortex, solid against Naga. In terms of the mids, Lina buys Satanic, Meepo heals from himself. Pango doesn't necessarily heal, heal, neither does really Primal or Bat. I wouldn't say it's great against those heroes. But I also think it's just really good with a lot of the current safe laners. I think it's great with Void in lane, or Solid at least. I think it's good with Naga in lane. I think in general, it's just like a hero that gives you kill potential in the mid game, which is really nice to have, as a lot of team comps are very greedy. For instance, if you have a Marcy 4, before Marcy, like even when Marcy is 6, yeah, she does a ton of damage, but you can literally have a Marcy AA walking around the map together and you can kill anybody, right? You can just straight up kill anybody. Uh, with not a single core. Your course can be farming three lanes. You just run around and solo kill the mid with two supports easily. Like it's not even close. It's not even close. They just insta die to a uh, Marcy. So there's a lot of synergy with the force as well. I think, I don't know. I'm just such an AA fan. I think the hero, people give it a bad rap for having a bad lane. I don't even think AA's lane is that bad. I, like the more I watch it, I'm like, this hero's not losing lane. It's E has been buffed so much where I feel like it's a good spell. Cold feet is solid for trading. Like, it just is. If someone tries to man up on you or your safe lane or new cold feet, they either have to decide between getting stunned and taking a bunch of damage or running away and getting auto attacked the entire way back by AA's like 8 million attack range. So I just like the hero. Coming to number four is Jakiro. I don't think that it, really there's nothing special about Jakiro. It's just a good hero. It's just good. If you don't know what to pick and you're playing five, you can pick Jakiro. Coming to number three is Chen. He heals for way too much and mech is too strong. Also, there's way too many stupid creeps. Ice armor needs to be removed or at least nerfed. 
Why is it a five second cooldown and a 45 second duration? What ability is a five second cooldown and a 45 second duration in Dota? It doesn't exist, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, Chen's stupid. Coming to number two is Omni Knight, Heavenly Grace, just a good spell. Now that it also gets applied on Omni when you use it on a teammate, means that usually you would just like, he would save someone and then die. Now he gets the, what is it, 760 health? Crazy, just doesn't die. The hero just doesn't die. No one dies when Omni's in, uh, on, on his team. And it, yeah, it's just nutty. It's just nutty stuff. And finally is Undying. I'm not, I really don't even want to talk about Undying. I've talked so much about why Undying is the best five in the patch. Decay heals you, that's all you need to know. Old Undying would die at minute two, minute three guaranteed or have to kill himself. New Undying just lanes for five minutes straight and you can't lane ever for like literally five minutes. You're just getting decayed if he buys a ton of mangoes, which he should. And then he pulls, and then you lose creeps, and then your 2k net worth when the safe laner is 4k net worth, and then you can't lane, and then you can't rotate. I, I don't know, I hate this hero. I hate laning against this hero, I hate playing against this hero. I hate everything that Undying stands for, and that's gonna be all for today's video. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace! And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.